Yo, what is going on NFL fans? Last week I did an NFC East only mock draft where I do the Eagles, Cowboys, Commanders, and Giants. I draft for all four of those teams, all seven rounds. We're doing that, but version 2.0. The Eagles just lost Hassan Reddick to the Jets. That's probably the biggest news in the NFC East over the past week, but a lot is going to change in the next couple weeks as the draft gets closer. Let's mock it for the NFC East. In every single mock draft on planet Earth, Caleb Williams always goes first, and boom, he goes first again to the Bears. Now, the Commanders are on the clock at two. To me, it's Drake May or Daniels from LSU. Man, and after Daniels Pro Day, he just impresses me so much. And he weighed a little more than I thought he was going to weigh. I think it was like 215, and that's cool with me, 6'4", 215. If he gets up to 220, 225, that's the most I want to see him weigh. Daniels throws that beautiful deep ball, and I just love the way he fits in with Dan Quinn and new offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury, the former head coach of the Cardinals, where Kyler Murray was there. He worked with Patrick Mahomes in college. It makes too much sense. Daniels is going to the Commanders at number two. Drake May goes number three. Harrison goes number four. Brock Bowers, number five, to the Chargers as a surprise. On the clock at number six is the New York Giants. Malik Neighbors is still on the board. This is a no-brainer. You could go Joe Alt, but their offensive line is actually a lot better than people think. Malik Neighbors, to me, is wide receiver number one. I think I like him better than Marvin Harrison Jr. I think he's a cleaner catcher of the football. He can run those intermediate routes. He can run the deep routes. He can run comebacks and digs and whatever you want him to run. This dude can run. He catches the ball at high points. I love Malik Neighbors. The Giants get an absolute stud at wide receiver in Malik Neighbors. The birds are up pick 22. So I'm really looking at addressing the cornerback position with who's left on the board right now. It's between Cooper DeGene and Kool Aid McKinstry, the corner from Alabama. But the one thing I love about Cooper DeGene is his flexibility. He's so good everywhere. Coverage grade, 76.8. Run grade, 78.6. And he only played 10 games this year because he broke his leg in like November or something like that. But just look how good he was in 2022. He's one of the best secondary players in this entire draft. And the best part about him, he has good size. 6'1", 207. The dude can play outside corner. He can play safety. And he's quick and shifty enough to play in the slot. The guy's got a great football IQ. He's a top 10 talent in this draft. And falling to the Eagles at 22 is a no-brainer. I'm taking cornerback from Iowa, Cooper DeGene. When I look at the Cowboys roster and I see who's left on the board, the positions that really stand out to me are center Jackson Powers Johnson and linebacker Peyton Wilson. Is Peyton Wilson worth drafting at the number 24 position? For the Cowboys, who don't have a ton of picks in this draft, draft next at number 56. At 24, you really need to fix a position of need. And to me, the bigger need is center. So the best center in college football last year, Jackson Powers Johnson, a stud the last two years. 800 snaps this year, gave up no sacks, and legitimately only one hurry. For the Cowboys, you're getting a great center and a spot you desperately need help with, Jackson Power Johnson is going to the Cowboys. The Washington Commanders are on the board. Round two, pick four. I love TJ Tampa, the cornerback from Iowa State for them. Cornerback is a position of need. There's not a very talented bunch of corners on their current roster. This pick was between TJ Tampa and Mike Sanristriel. But Mike is only 5'10", 180 pounds, and TJ Tampa is 6'1", over 200 pounds. That is great size for a number one corner going against these big athletic wide receivers in the NFC East like A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb. You got to go TJ Tampa here for sure. The Commanders are on the clock round two, pick eight. And to me, safety is a very big position of need. For the Washington Commanders. We addressed cornerback with the last pick, and now we're going to bring in a front line safety. And this defense is starting to sure up pretty good, guys. I like Bullard, the number 40 pick in the draft for the Washington Commanders. The Giants are on the clock right now at pick 47. 
They lost Saquon Barkley to the Birds. So let's bring in the possibly the best running back in the entire draft, Jonathan Brooks, the halfback from Texas, 91 grade this year, 140 elusive rate. Oh my God, rushing grade 91.9. I like drafting him here. Let's revamp the offense. And now we got Malik Neighbors. We got Jonathan Brooks. So Daniel Jones has no excuse anymore about sucking. If he doesn't do good this year, you got to go get another quarterback. You're giving him weapons and a pretty decent offensive line to make things happen this year in New York. We're going Brooks. The birds are on the board at pick number 50. So they pick at 50 and 53. There's a bunch of good receivers on the board still. I really want to draft Ricky Persall. But with Hassan Reddick being traded to the Jets, I want to get a little younger at the edge defender position. Idissa Isaac from Penn State had a really good year this year. Nine sacks, 400 snaps, four hits, 20 hurries. Pretty solid all around. Let's see what PFF has to say. If Isaac can pack on extra pounds for added strength and anchor ability while remaining adequately explosive, he has the handwork and pass rush profile to be a starter at the NFL level. He loves the club rip move and he uses it consistently to turn the corner and get around blockers. And this could be a good for the 3-4 defense if he moves to that outside linebacker position. I like Idissa Isaac. The edge defender from Penn State to go to the Birds. Oh, nice. Ricky Persall is still on the board, so I'm doing it, guys. I think there's some depth later in the draft to address some offensive line concerns. But Ricky Persall is, without a doubt, the best route runner in this entire wide receiver draft class. I love Ricky. Getting him at pick 53. He's got crazy good hands. Dude, I love this pick for the Birds. The Cowboys are up round two, pick 24, and the Cowboys are looking pretty thin at the linebacker position. And one of my favorite linebackers left on the board is Edger and Cooper from Texas A&M, 90 grade this year. He's great everywhere, pass rush, coverage, run defense. He's one of the best linebackers in the draft. He might actually be my favorite linebacker. Pure linebacker. I love Edger and Cooper. He's got solid size, 6'3", 230. He's only 22. I love him for the Cowboys. And uh, as an Eagles fan, I hate it. But Edger and Cooper is the truth, and the Cowboys should draft him if he's available with that second-round pick. The Commanders got Jaden Daniels, their quarterback. We drafted a corner with the last pick. Let's give him a big-time weapon who's compared to DK Metcalf. Xavier Leggett. Great year last year, 86.9 receiving grade, but he's a monster. 6'3", 227, big outside receiver. This dude can definitely be a wide receiver one. Xavier Leggett and Terry McLaurin on the field at the same time. OMG, that's a wow factor there. Give Jaden Daniels another over-the-top weapon. He had a lot of success with Brian Thomas Jr., who is very similar to Xavier Leggett, the big, tall, fast, athletic receiver. Xavier Leggett goes to the Commanders. Giants are on the clock at pick 70. They need help everywhere. The Giants probably need a little more help on defense. You could even go Spencer Rattler, who's a pretty damn good quarterback, guys. Threw for over 3,000 yards. I think this might be a really interesting pick for the Giants, right? This is kind of a Daniel Jones insurance policy. If he sucks again, I mean, Spencer Rattler got a great deep grade, 6'1", 217. He has a mature game with fundamentals and pocket presence in addition to good accuracy, and he's really good at a structure. I love this pick for the Giants, man. You get a... Decent quarterback in round three with the potential to be a starter in the NFL. Spencer Rattler is my guy in the third round for the Giants. The Commanders are up round three, pick 14. As I'm looking through all the talent that is left in this draft, I want to find some offensive line help. And I scouted this guy earlier in the draft process, Mason McCormick, the guard from South Dakota State. The dude has played over 800 snaps every year in college, and he gave up no sacks in 832 offensive snaps this year. He's only given up two sacks in three college seasons. It's absolutely incredible. Run block grade 90, pass block grade 85.4. He's going to the Commanders. Cowboys are on the clock in round three, pick 24. And obviously that running back room is not the same with Tony Pollard leaving. So I want to bring in one of these running backs, guys. Jalen Wright, 
The running back from Tennessee, 7.4 yards per carry. Only 136 attempts, though, so I don't like that. It's not a huge sample size, but when the dude touches the ball, he's super dangerous. Blake Corum, very, very solid player. 258 carries, 1,245 yards, but that elusive rating of only 27 definitely concerns me. Let's check out Trey Benson from Florida State. 80 grades the last two years. Average him with six yards a carry on 156 attempts this year. Elusive rating 106.4. When I go back to it, Jalen Wright just seems to be the guy, man. He hasn't been used a lot in college, but he's got really, really good grades, man. 132, a loose in this rating. 5'11", 210, that's great size. He's only 21 years old, which is great, too. He's an NFL caliber back. Jalen Wright is going to the Cowboys. The Redskins are on the clock. Round 3, pick 37. They kind of traded away their whole defensive line last year at the end of the season. So we need some edge help. And that help comes from Xavier Thomas, the edge defender from Clemson. Very solid collegiate career, guys. He was hurt in 2022, but he bounced back in 2023. 74 overall grade. Almost an 80 pass rush grade amongst the top in his class. I like him. He's big. He's strong. 6'2", 255. He's got the speed on the outside to get to the quarterback. We're going edge defender Xavier Thomas from Clemson to go to the Commanders. The Giants are on the clock. Round four, pick seven. The Giants have one of the worst cornerback groups in the entire NFL. Their top three corners, none of them even rank in the top 100 on PFF. The top three guys are Brownlee, Hart, and Jones. After scouting them, I like Elijah Jones' game the best, man. 90-man coverage grade. Like I always say in most of my videos, cornerbacks can learn how to play in zone but you can't learn how to be super athletic and cover man to man they can't teach you those hit moves they can't teach you that catch up speed they can't teach you those things man coverage great 91 almost oh my gosh man that's super good he's got good size too 6'2 184 i love elijah jones the cornerback from boston college going to the giants the eagles are on the board again in the fourth round and I have them taking Cooper Beebe, the guard from Kansas State. He's the most consistent guard I've seen fall this far in the draft in a very long time. 79.9 run block grade, 90 pass block grade. He's allowed two sacks in three years of college football. He's played over 900 snaps the past two seasons. I love him going to Jeff Statlin U. He can play guard. He can play center. A great complimentary piece to add to the cupboard of offensive linemen for the Philadelphia Eagles. All right, everybody, that wraps up our four-round mock draft for the NFC East. The Commanders went Daniels with the number two pick. Neighbors went to the Giants at six. The Eagles took Cooper DeJean, and the Cowboys took Jackson Powers Johnson. In the second round, TJ Tampa to the Commanders. Bullard, the safety from Georgia to the Commanders. Jonathan Brooks, the halfback, went number 47 to the Giants. Idissa Isaac, the edge defender, went number 50 to the Birds. And then Ricky Persall, number 53 to the Birds. Edron Cooper, the linebacker, at 56 to the Cowboys. Round three, Xavier Leggett to the Commanders. Spencer Rattler, the quarterback, to the Giants. Pick 78, McCormick, the guard from South Dakota State. The Cowboys get Jalen Wright, the halfback, at pick 87. Then Xavier Thomas went with the last pick in the third round, pick 100 to the Commanders. In the fourth round, Elijah Jones, the corner from Boston College, goes to the Giants. Cooper Beebe, the outstanding guard from Kansas State, goes to the Eagles. All right, everyone, that wraps up our four-round mock draft for the NFC East. Let me know in the comments below, do you like these picks? Do you hate these picks? Either way, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, so we can continue to bring you all kinds of NFL draft updates, NFL free agency updates, and all things NFL. Peace!